Welcome back. We are still on the topic statistics. In the previous video, we learned how to draw a bar chart for a given data. In this video, we are going to learn how to draw a histogram for a given data. Let's start. A histogram is similar to a bar chart. So we are going to look at some of the similarities that exist between a histogram and a bar chart. 1. On a histogram, a set of rectangular bars are used to represent the items in the data. So just as we have on a bar chart, on a histogram too, the data, the items in the data are represented using a set of rectangular bars. The height of the bars corresponds to the frequencies of the items. We saw this when we were learning about a bar chart. On a bar chart, we saw that the height of the bar will correspond to the frequency of that particular item. On a histogram too, the height of the bars corresponds to the frequencies of the items. So these are some of the similarities that exist between a histogram and a bar chart. But there are some differences as well. And one of them is that on a histogram, there are no gaps between the bars. When we were learning how to draw a bar chart, we saw that from one bar to another bar, we leave some space between them. On a histogram, there are no gaps or there are no spaces between the bars. When we were learning how to draw a bar chart, we saw that on a bar chart, the frequencies are usually shown on the vertical axis and the max on the horizontal axis. On a histogram, the horizontal axis may have the max, the class midpoint, which is also known as the class mid value, or the class boundaries. So on a histogram, on the horizontal axis, you may have the max, the class midpoint, which is also known as the class mid value, or the class boundaries. What you have on the horizontal axis depends on the type of data that has been given to you. We are going to learn how to draw a histogram for a grouped and an ungrouped data. We will begin with an ungrouped data in this video. So in this video, we will learn how to draw a histogram for an ungrouped data. Let's start. Ungrouped data. Let's use this as an example. Let's say that this table shows us the marks scored by some students in a test. So those who scored 7 are 5, those who scored 8 are 6, those who scored 9 are 7, and those who scored 10 are 4. Now, this is an example of an ungrouped data because the individual marks have been given to us. We were not given intervals or groups, so this is an ungrouped data. How do we draw a histogram for a data like this? Just like a bar chart, in an examination, when you are asked to draw a histogram, you will be usually required to do so on a graph sheet. So we are going to draw our histogram on the graph sheet. I have my graph sheet here. When you are given an ungrouped data, like the one we have here, the max will be on the horizontal axis. So on our graph sheet here, we will have the max on the horizontal axis and the frequencies on the vertical axis. We will have to choose a scale for the vertical axis. So looking at the values that I have here, I'm going to choose a scale of 2 centimeters to 1 unit. You use that scale to number the vertical axis, just like we can see here. Now, after that, you have to choose the width of the bar. We are going to draw a bar to represent each mark. So we have to choose the width of the bar. Just as we learned under bar chart, you have to choose the width of the bar such that all the bars will fit onto the graph sheet that you have. Here we have four different marks, so it means that we are going to have four different bars. Looking at the graph sheet that I have and the number of bars I have to draw, 
I will let one bar occupy 10 minor divisions, that is 10 small boxes. So each bar will occupy 10 small boxes. So I will begin with the first one, which is the bar for Mac 7, and the frequency is 5. So I'll have the bar for Mac 7, and the frequency is 5. So the height of the bar will be at 5. Now I have left a space here. I will later on explain to you why I have left that space there. So this is the bar for Mac 7, and the frequency is 5. One thing that you have to note about a histogram for an ungrouped data is that when you are drawing a histogram for an ungrouped data, the mark for each bar will be at the center of the bar. So for this bar, the mark is 7. I made the bar occupy 10 minor divisions, that is 10 small boxes. The point here is that the mark for the bar will be at the center of the bar. So the center of this bar will be at the fifth division and the mark which is 7 will be at that point. So you will count to the fifth division and the mark which is 7 will be at that point. Let's move on to the next mark which is 8. The frequency is 6. Remember that on a histogram we don't leave spaces between the bars. So the next bar will be drawn attached to the first one the height will be at 6 since the frequency is at 6 and the mark for it will be at the center of the bar this one also occupies 10 minor divisions so the mark for it will be at the center of it for an ungrouped data the width of the bars will be the same so each of them will occupy 10 minor divisions just as i have chosen we move on to the next one, which is the bar for Mac 9. The frequency is 7. So we will draw that attached to this one. And the height will be at 7. The Mac, which is 9, will be at the center of the bar. It occupies 10 minor divisions. So the center will be at the fifth division. And that is where our Mac, which is 9, will be. The last one is 10. The frequency is 4. So we will draw the bar attached to the bar for 9 and the height will be at 4 since the frequency is 4. The mark which is 10 will be at the center of the bar and so we will have it here which is the center of the bar and that is 10. Now let's come to the reason why I left this space here. If we look at the numbering on the horizontal axis carefully, we have 7, 8, 9 and 10. From one mark to the next, it increases by one unit. So from 7 to 8, from 8 to 9, from 9 to 10. So ideally, our numbering should have started from 0, which we already have here, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That would have been the ideal situation since the numbering increases by one unit but we can clearly see that on the histogram we started from seven because the marks that was given to us in the question started from seven so it is as if we have ignored one two three four five six we have ignored this part of the scale so we have broken it off and because we have broken it off, we have to indicate on the graph sheet that we have broken it off. So how do we do that? On the graph sheet, to indicate that you have broken a part of the scale off, what I'll do is that I'll come to the space that I left here, then I'll clean a portion of it. And then I'll bring this sign to indicate that a part of the scale is broken off. So this sign here shows that the numbering should have started from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, before we get to 7, 8, 9, and 10. But I did not bring them because in the data that was given to us, that part was not included. So we started from 7, 8, 9, and 10. So you bring this sign here to indicate that you have broken a part of the scale off. 
In most books, when a histogram is being drawn for a given data, you will see the sign between the frequency axis and the first horizontal bar. Anytime you see this sign, it shows that a part of the scale or the numbering on the horizontal axis has been broken off, just like the one we have here. You can add a little design to it for it to look nice, just as we were doing for the bar charts. This is how to draw a histogram for an ungrouped data. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to this channel for more videos. In the next video, we are going to apply what we have learned in this video to solve a question. Bye-bye.